Hi, I'm Goran Vishnich. As an animal lover, I find seals to be some of the most wonderful creatures in the world. In the water, they're the masters of their environment. Few other animals have their grace and agility. Sadly, these unique beauties of nature are under threat as never before, mainly thanks to us. The film you're about to watch will tell you more about seals and those threats. IFAO, the International Fund for Animal Welfare, is working around the world to save these magnificent marine mammals. Together, we can protect them for future generations. Seals have been fascinating people since their earliest sightings by sailors. Their incredible grace in the water has made them one of the best known icons of the sea. In oceans all around the world, these magnificent marine mammals perform with agility and effortless speed, touching all that see them with their natural beauty, like an underwater ballet. But despite our love of seals, humans are responsible for the many threats they face today. Threats such as pollution, global warming, entanglement in fishing nets and hunting. In the past, some species have vanished and many taken to the brink of extinction. Others are at serious risk today. But first, to trace their story, we have to go far back in time. Scientists believe that seals evolved from animals living on the land that were related to modern mammals, including dogs and bears. These creatures took to the sea about 30 million years ago. The first seals lived in the Pacific Ocean, off what is now California in the United States. Over millions of years, they dispersed throughout the North Pacific and into the Atlantic then later into the Southern Hemisphere. Today, seals are found all over the world, but the largest numbers live in the cold of the Arctic and Antarctic, where food is most abundant. Many legends and stories have become part of the myth of these beautiful sea creatures. In some tales, the seals are said to turn into people when they come ashore. In one such story, a beautiful girl turns back into a seal and is tragically killed by her fisherman husband. Seals may all seem pretty similar at first, but they often display very different characteristics. For example, seals feed mainly on fish, but the leopard seal eats penguins and sometimes even other seals. Some species, such as harp seals, haul out onto ice and turn this frozen paradise into a vast nursery with thousands of seal pups and their mothers. This is perhaps the most beautiful maternity ward in the world. When harp seal pups are first born, they keep warm by shivering. Inside their mother's womb, it's cozy. But once they enter the icy world outside, they often face temperatures below freezing. This one seems to be crying. In fact, looking at their beautiful watery eyes, it's easy to think so, but it's just that they lack the ducts to drain away the tears that naturally keep their eyes lubricated. Seals can migrate more than a thousand miles to return to their breeding grounds. Others can dive to incredible depths. The northern elephant seal holds the record for the deepest dive, at more than a thousand meters. The scientific name for seals is pinnipeds, which means fin-footed and refers to their webbed feet. There are 33 species of seals and sea lions. These are divided into three families. True seals, often known as earless seals, fur seals and sea lions, known as eared seals, and the walrus. They can look pretty strange sometimes too. Look at these guys. Male hooded seals have the ability to inflate the black sack or hood, which hangs over the end of the nose of the adult male. Adult males can also inflate the skin-like membrane in their noses, so it forms a large red balloon. They particularly do this when they're being aggressive or defensive, 
and possibly to impress the females. Seals range in size from small female fur seals to huge male northern elephant seals, weighing almost four tons. They're perfectly adapted to their underwater environment and can even sleep underwater for brief periods. They are warm-blooded and feed on their mother's milk as pups. That milk has such a high fat content that some seal pups like this chubby youngster will double their weight in a matter of days. But from the moment they're born, seals enter a difficult world. Every year thousands of seals become entangled in fishing nets and drown. Sometimes tens of miles of drift nets create huge underwater walls of death. Pollution is another increasing problem. The oceans are being used as dumping grounds for all sorts of waste that's harmful to seals and all marine life. Poisonous chemicals from infantry and even from our everyday lives at work, school and home all too often find their way into the sea. This toxic waste, such as pesticides, can end up collecting in the fat of seals. Habitat loss and climate change are other signs of how the modern world is impacting on seals. Climate change may have a number of significant effects on seal populations, not least because warming sea temperatures are greatly reducing the ice that some seals need to give birth to their young. The last seal species to become extinct was the Caribbean monk seal, which has not been seen for about 40 years. Its relative, the Mediterranean monk seal, is now also on the brink of extinction and is the most endangered marine mammal in Europe. It's believed there are only about 500 left alive in the world. IFOR has worked on protecting monk seals for many years. It's co-funding a four-year project to try to reduce the deliberate and accidental killing of seals. It's also worked on surveys of monk seal population numbers with local fishermen and other research using its specialized scientific vessel, Song of the Whale. Sometimes seals are found in difficulty along the sandy shores of Cape Cod in America. IFOR works with the Cape Cod Stranding Network team to help rescue them and release them back into the sea. The dumping of oil by ships at sea is a major pollution issue for animals. I4 works to protect marine wildlife when there are major oil spills and lobbies governments internationally to stop ships deliberately dumping oil and to improve shipping regulations. But perhaps the most obvious impact people have on seals is by killing them for their fur and turning it into coats and other accessories for the fashion world. Seal hunting for fur and other products means hundreds of thousands of seals being killed every year. Seals have been hunted for centuries. The Inuit have always hunted seals in the Arctic. Archaeological evidence suggests that seals were hunted by people living on the east coast of North America 4,000 years ago. But it's commercial hunting that takes the real toll. Over the past 200 years, the seal hunting business has pushed some species to the brink of extinction. In the 19th century, fewer than 100 northern elephant seals were left alive. Walruses were also hunted in huge numbers for their fat. They used to live all along the east coast of North America, but today the Canadian population of walruses is only found in the Arctic and in Hudson Bay. Seals were in fact hunted in most places where they came into contact with people. But gradually, the majority of countries ended the killing as alternative products were developed. However, large-scale commercial hunting still takes place in Canada, Russia, Greenland, Norway and Namibia. Between 2003 and 2005, the Canadian seal hunt killed more than a million harp seals, making it by far the largest hunt for any marine mammal in the world. In 2006, the hunt quota set by the Canadian government of 335,000 animals 
was one of the largest ever. This hunt has been hotly debated by the pro and anti-sealing sides of the issue for many years. The Canadian government and other hunt supporters say a cull is necessary to control the population. Those opposed to it argue that it's cruel, puts the seal population at risk and that it doesn't make sense economically. Harp seals give birth to their young in the Gulf of St. Lawrence and off the coast of Newfoundland in late February and early March each year. Despite a decision in the 1980s by the European Economic Community banning the import of white coat seal pup pelts, in recent years more than 95% of the seals killed were less than three months old. It is legal to kill seal pups once they start to molt which is at about 14 days old. The sealers either club or shoot the animals. Scientists report that the hunt puts the harp seal population in danger because killing such high numbers each year is not sustainable. A recent scientific study shows that the Canadian government's plan for harp seals risks depleting the population by more than 70% over the next 15 years. Scientists also point out there's no evidence that killing seals helps to protect fish stocks. Even the Canadian government now admits that it's human overfishing that caused the decline in cod stocks. The Greenland hunt targets the same population as the Canadian one, bringing 75,000 seals ashore, but actually killing over 150,000. Because for every animal that's landed, an additional animal has been killed, but not recovered. Scientists point to this as a particularly cruel and wasteful aspect of such hunting. Common or harbour seals are found around UK waters, as well as 35% of the global population of grey seals. In Scotland, there have been repeated calls for culls of seals. This is led by fishermen who are concerned that the seals are eating large amounts of fish. The Australian fur seal is also regarded as a problem by fishermen, and a significant number are killed each year in traps and nets, or shot. This claim that seals are damaging fish stocks is always used as one of the excuses for commercial seal hunts and culls. But overfishing is widely accepted by fishermen as well as the main reason for fish stocks collapsing. So what can we do to protect seals? For more than 35 years, I4 has been campaigning internationally to protect seals all around the world. At present, a third of all seal species are listed as at risk. In some cases, such as the Mediterranean monk seal, the species is listed as critically endangered. The Canadian seal hunt is opposed by politicians across Europe, the US and other parts of the world and indeed by 69% of Canadians. Today, efforts are being made to get governments to ban all seal products in Europe and elsewhere. In the past two years, a number of countries have introduced or are considering bans on the import of seal skins and seal products. This includes the UK, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands and Mexico. In the United States, such imports are prohibited. So where do we go from here? Hopefully, seals like these do have a future. But our seas have become a treacherous place for them to live. It's up to us to make their habitats safe again. If we don't care for these wonderful marine mammals, then beautiful pictures may be all that's left for the generations to come.